we retrace our path from the Simeon Mountains back to Gondor. Gondar served as the capital of the Ethiopian Empire from 1635 to 1855. The many churches and castles surviving from that period have earned the city the nickname the Camelot of Africa. Beyond this gatehouse is the Deborah Birhan Selassie Church. When Gondar was sacked by Sudanese dervishes in 1888, legend has it that as the soldiers approached this gatehouse, a swarm of bees drove the soldiers back, and the Archangel Michael stood in front of these gates with a flaming sword drawn. This church is among the most important churches in Ethiopia, and is famed for its beautiful examples of Ethiopian church art. Icons of the Holy Trinity and the Crucifixion adorn the entrance to the Holy of Holies. The ceiling is covered by the faces of 135 angels looking in all directions. Their large eyes are the hallmark of Ethiopian church art. The angels are also guarding the archway to the Holy of Holies where the church's copy of the Ark of the Covenant is kept and only priests are allowed to enter. Every inch of the interior walls are adorned in large-eyed religious iconography. Did you know that St. George of Dragon fame was Ethiopian? Apparently the Crusaders became enamored by the life of St. George and took the story back to Europe with them, and St. George became the patron saint of England. Colorful panels tell biblical stories with big-eyed Ethiopians in 17th century dress. The story of the crucifixion and the resurrection of Christ occupy another wall. Pictures of saints and martyrs fill in any leftover spaces. A Madonna and child occupy a place of honor between the curtain doorways to the Holy of Holies. We also learn that drums have an important part in the church service. The church is surrounded by a rock wall with 13 gates. The main gatehouse represents Christ and the other 12, like this one, are the apostles. It's forbidden to cut down trees around the church, so the area is a sanctuary for birds. What with a three-hour drive and a beautiful church, we've worked up an appetite, so it's the Four Sisters restaurant for lunch. The large buffet has something for everyone from shepherd's pie and pasta to Ethiopian cuisine. John gave us a heads up to bring our cameras to lunch. The restaurant has set out feeders that attract all kinds of birds. We've just entered the Fasal Gibi, the royal enclosure in the center of the modern city of Gondar. In the 17th and 18th centuries, this compound was the residence of the Emperor of Ethiopia. Emperor Fasilides employed a Portuguese architect to build the first palace in 1635. It had rooms for dining and entertaining with separate halls for men and women. Fasilides' son, Johannes I, added this library and chancellery to the compound. The Italians used the compound as an administrative center during their occupation of Ethiopia from 1936 to 41. Some of the buildings were damaged by British aerial bombing. Johannes' son Joshua I built his palace next to his grandfather's. Joshua I, who suffered from a skin condition, built this Turkish bath on the advice of the French doctor Charles-Jacques Ponce in 1700. Dawit III, son of Joshua I, was known for his patronage of Americ folk songs. He built this amusement hall in the royal enclosure. Bakafa, son of Joshua I and brother of Dawit III, built this banquet hall. Joshua II, son of Bakafa, built this castle for his mother. The entire royal enclosure covers 17 acres and is surrounded by a stone wall with 12 gates. Our last stop today is another of Fasilides' castles. This one sits in the middle of a swimming pool. To 
preserve the 350-year-old summer palace, the pool is only filled once a year on January 19th for the celebration of Epiphany. The pool is surrounded by magnificent old trees full of birds. At the risk of boring the rest of the group, we do a little birding. That wraps up our short but eventful visit to the old imperial capital of Gondor. Tomorrow we head for Lalibela. <laughs>